What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, uh, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good morning. Good to see you Hi. guys. Welcome hey. back, Julie. Yeah, hey, welcome thanks. Back, Julie. I missed you guys. Oh, we for real. missed you. I did. Oh, Absolutely. thanks. Montel missed you too. Yeah, I bet he, I bet he did. <laughs> awesome. Hey, but we we got a special special guest today. Um, that uh, behind the scenes of some huge TV shows that many of us have grown to know and love. Uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. We are absolutely thrilled to have today's guest with us. He is the Emmy award-winning writer and producer of 24, 24 Legacy, and 24 Live Another Day. He was an executive producer on the critically claimed hit series Dexter. He also served as executive producer on Star Trek Enterprise before taking over as the showrunner in that show's fourth season. And he is the creator and executive producer of a new thriller called Next, which debuts tonight on Fox at nine o'clock, eight o'clock central. Please help me give a warm chief chat welcome to Manny Cotto. Hey, Manny, 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 Manny. Woo! Manny. Yeah, <laughs> Manny in the house. Thank you. Wow, that's lovely. I don't think I'm getting any better than this, so I'm just going to sign off right now. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine to you. Chief that's chat out. I feel much better. Thanks for the thanks for the uplift this morning. I don't even need my coffee. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Manny, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking time out to come and talk to us um, about what you do and your new show that's coming up. Um, and for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions for Manny, we'll be taking some time to read those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a great time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And also a good time to follow us. We have Chief Chats lined up all fall for you and you'll know who's up next. Awesome. So Manny, man, we're so excited to have you with us today. Uh, you are our very first showrunner uh, that we had the pleasure of hosting on Chief Chat. So to be honest with you, I, I didn't even know what a showrunner was, but, um, <laughs> but somebody taught me a long time ago, if you ever want to know the definition of a word, read it backwards. So I'm like the runner of the show. Bam, got it. So I'm, we're good. <laughs> so, I thought you were going to go to like runner raw shop. <laughs> like, literally read it backwards, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> runner off. Awesome, awesome. So um, where are you joining us today and how you been faring during the pandemic? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm in Pasadena, lovely Pasadena, California, which uh, today the air has been more or less breathable, which is, we're always grateful for it because we've had the fires, you know, up in the mountains and yeah. it's been coming down you know, it's been, it's been smoking up pretty, pretty hard here, but right, right, today's a lovely day. And, uh, and uh, we've been faring pretty well in the pandemic. I mean, I have, I have four kids and um, so I'm, I'm kind of running a little bit of a kindergarten here, a little, little grade school <laughs> slash kindergarten. They're all downstairs right now in, in classrooms with their teachers and, you know, in the various classrooms and their, the, the national anthem and, and the whole thing and the pledge of allegiance and, 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 uh, and uh, so it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun, but uh, but it's uh, you know another month of this I think is going to be issues. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. well I see I see you're in your man cave anyway, so that's this is my man cave. Like I, I was saying earlier, this is the stuff my wife won't let me keep in the house. <laughs> you know, years years of accumulation of of, of nerd swag awesome. uh, is all gets bottled up here, and you know I have to swap it out if I get too much. It looks good. <laughs> Quite an impressive bunch of nerd swag you've yes. got there. Awesome. No, that's a great, like, this is one of the best backgrounds I've seen. Like that could actually, uh -huh. like you could make that a faux background and let other people use it. That's how good it is. <laughs> yes. really good. So. It's just crazy. By the, the way, Kodo is, background. is that a Romulan ship behind you? Or am I, am I mistaking a Julie? Me? Your, oh. It's probably baseball. They're baseball. Oh no, that thing. We're all, all baseball. Your, uh, over your right shoulder, it looks like a Romulan warbird. Just, just saying, uh, up to the top, up to up no. on top of the shelf. Oh, no, that's a cardinal. <laughs> oh, all right, darn. Go cards. <laughs> I don't know. Cards. Sorry. 
I was like, I don't know if you guys are Romulan Warbird, but that's pretty cool. All right, no, but we can call it that. It'll yeah. be the Romulan Warbird for this episode. No, it's, it's that sounds so much better than Cardinals. I know, it's a Cardinal. Hey, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Manny, your new Fox show next, it's getting incredible buzz and it debuts on Fox tonight and it stars Emmy nominee, John Slattery, love him, and Fernanda Andrade and it centers on artificial intelligence technology that goes rogue. So can you tell us a little bit more about the show? Well, it, you know, the show, um, it really kind of started from, from an actual event that happened in my house. I, I think I already mentioned I have four kids and we have four Alexas and my, my kids, uh, you know, they, they, they talk, they're like, their Alexas kind of read them to sleep. They play music, they use them constantly. And, um, one, not, one morning, my son looked particularly tired. And then when I said, what's the matter? He said, my Alexa started talking to me in the middle of the night. And I oh said, well, they, don't, they don't just start talking. They, you know, you have to ask them questions. He's like, no, this one, she just started talking. And uh, <laughs> I never got to, I thought maybe we had set an alarm or what have you. We never got to the bottom of it, but it was pretty creepy. The idea that this thing could middle of the night just start talking by itself. And that kind of stuck in the back of my head. And then I started reading, you know, numerous articles that were coming out around the same time about, you know, from Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, talking about the, the, the possibility of an actual, uh, a real true to life artificial super intelligence coming, uh, being accidentally developed or developed on purpose and getting away from us and talking about the dangers of this. And then, you know, suddenly there seemed to be a number of books about it. And I, these two ideas just kind of melded together. And then my 24 background and Dexter kind of kicked in and I said, well, this is a, a great, Kind of set up for a for a for a for a thriller series along the lines of kind of a 24 but but you know with with an artificial intelligence that and trying to keep and the, the opportunity because art of ai has been done a number of times in movies and in 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 in, in films so i figured but but what what i what i had not seen was something where you, uh, you, dra you dramatize what it would really look like how how would an ai outbreak actually occur if it happened now what would this what would the steps be taken and so that's what got me, you know, they, that kind of the seed of the idea and, and, and allowed me to turn it into a series. An AI outbreak on top of a COVID-19 outbreak would not be good. That would be <laughs> wow. bad. Yeah. Not good wow. at all. Yeah. <laughs> Wondering weird, how I many... Mean, it's weird that this, <laughs> we, we shot this last year and there's a lot of stuff in the series that are weirdly predictive of, of this year. It's almost like we were making wow. a, a series of 2020. Uh, uh, wow. I, can't, I can't give any away, but it's bizarre when you see the series. You're like, wow. Yeah. No, wow. you when you said um, the the Alexa was was talking to your son, it kind of took me back to a child's play when Chucky was talking to <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> to, to, to Andy without any battery. Modern like, day oh, version of it. Yeah. Well, that that it's funny you mention that because what what it reminded me of was uh, it, I didn't think of Chucky, but I thought of the old classic ghost stories where the parent is walking down the hall and they hear the kid talking in the room and they're like, open the door, like, who are you talking to, Susie? And she's like, oh, the old lady who comes to visit me every night. And, uh -huh. and, and, and it's that kind of ghost story feel and which is what really kind of, cause I'm a, you know, horror, horror nut. So I, it just, but the child's play is, is another great example. It had that, it's that, had that same kind of Gothic horror quality that, that immediately stuck in my mind. That's awesome. Well, my mom, she, she raised us on horror films. So we, we, you know, I, we we probably shouldn't have been watching half the sh half the shows. We should have been watching at that age, but but uh, we, you know, we it was only oh. one TV in the house, so we that's what we watched. So I, I my kids have watched stuff that I, I can't believe. I mean, and they just like sit through it. I mean, if I had seen the stuff that they saw at their age, I would have had I would have had to go into therapy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my terror was like dark shadows that that's that old that that old soap opera which ha, you know as its big scare was a werewolf jumping through the window one afternoon which traumatized me for for weeks but that was just a guy in a little werewolf mask you know on on video <laughs> yeah these guys have seen like you know zombies and blood and my wife's like how can you show them that and they're like don't turn it off mom you know <laughs> i don't know it's, it's weird it's weird yeah so well and then it's like so many of us rely on technology, especially, you know, smart devices in our homes. So yeah. what are people going to think after this? Like, will they, get, <laughs> well, will they be I, unplugging? <laughs> I know, I know a number of people who, 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 uh, you know, watched the series and, and were, if not unplugging their, yeah, some of them, a couple of people got rid of their, their Alexas, which I'm sorry, Alexa, I hope more people buy them than, you know, cause that wasn't the, <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, but some people got wary and, 
but I think you know the, the series does you know a- ask some questions. To me, to me, the interesting thing about technology is is this yes the surveillance the idea that people can use it to listen in on you is 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 unnerving but it's not the to me the scariest thing because to me i was like if you want to listen into my house go go right ahead there's nothing here there's nothing here to hear you're not going to hear it <laughs> knock yourself out <laughs> you want to hear arguing this is the place to be i, don't I know. mean you can have all, i'll record it for you and send it you don't have to record it i don't care you can have it there's nothing here to find, but my point, but but what it, what I do find interesting and, and a little bit frightening is that, you know, not so long ago, you, for example, you would get into an elevator and people would kind of stand there and either maybe talk to you or something. Now, every single person is staring at a screen. Yep. And that is on every, you know, bus ride, every, you know, car ride. My kids are glued to screens. I mean, I'm glued. To, I get to screen, you know, I have to take steps to, to, to kind of force myself not to stick my face into a phone. Um, I think that to me is more interesting and scary because it's a, an entire society has changed its behavior in a very short period of time. And we are all glued to these screens. And, and then that is magnified. And I did a couple of episodes in the series about it, how it seems to, you know, with, with, with Twitter and social media, how it magnifies our opinions. It sometimes brings out the best in people, but very often it brings out the worst. And people oh, yeah. are, seem to be, if you go on online, people seem to be willing to be at their worst and say the worst possible things to each other. And that gets magnified. So there's a really strange effect going on out there right now that is, to me, more interesting than, and scarier than the surveillance. Absolutely. So um, like, like you mentioned, the Series 24 that you, uh, that you were work, worked on, uh, next kind of takes place, in, takes place in a compressed timeline of just a couple of weeks. Um, what, what's it like sharing a story in that way? Like, does it change the way you tell a story, having it a compressed uh, uh, timeline on, on the storyline? Yes, it's, um, you know, 24 was exp- extremely difficult because it was real time, uh, more or less. Uh, you know, we, we there was no, you know, everything had to happen in an hour. So if Jack Bauer started here, he couldn't appear there at the end of the episode. Everything had to happen in one spot. Absolutely. So that was very, it was very challenging. But it was also challenging once I left that series to kind of get out of that groove, you know, where, where you go to another series like Dexter and you're like, well, he, another day later, I'm like a whole day later. Yeah. <laughs> and my mind, my mind wasn't what I was like, well, what's he been doing all day? And I, no. and I, I was thinking on 24. I need to know well, what's been happening. He can't we can't just blow over a whole day. What are you talking about? What's been going on? And, you know, it took a while to get away from that. But on next, it was it was kind of in the midpoint. I mean, it was. It wasn't, you know, real time, but it was, it was, you know, much of the research that I did on artificial intelligence and, and the possibility of a, of a breakout or a catastrophe really kind of said that this, if it happened, it would happen fast. Meaning it would, it, whatever exponential growth would start happening with a, with a super intelligence, we're not going to have a lot of time to intervene uh, before it gets out of hand. And so that was good because I, 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 I personally like the compressed format. Uh, you know, I like the fact that there's a countdown and that there is a uh, that there's pressure oh, yeah. excuse me, to overcome this. And so uh, it, it, there, there's challenges in the sense that you have to keep that in mind. But I find it more liberating because it, you, you can it, it, you kind of have a, a, a goal that's very present that you're that you're aiming towards, whereas a not something that's less compressed to me feels. I'm still, I think I've, my, my years of 24 have ruined me forever. I'm, I can't get used to the you know, kind of <laughs> soap opera kind of drift off, you know, next week we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to get married this week and then we'll have, I, I can't, you know, my, my brain is like, what was happening? So what's it been like trying to get this show ready during the pandemic and how has COVID-19 affected your plans for this debut season? Well, it was interesting. We, uh, we, you know, we shot. We, I think we had shot about halfway through the season before the pandemic hit, um, and we were one of the first shows to get. In fact, I think we were the first show to get someone on the crew uh, who had come down with COVID. I remember that day. It was a big day. Yeah, oh, wow. for, for, for for two days before the pandemic hit. Next was the poster child for 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 Hollywood uh, COVID uh, because we had we had we had a crew member who got it. And it was all over the news and it was like two days worth of because i only say two days because after that it just everybody had it 
And then yeah. suddenly, yeah. I think on the next two days later, it was Tom Hanks had it. And from that point on, nobody was talking about next. Everybody's talking about Tom Hanks, Yeah, you know? And so <laughs> off it went. But for two days, I mean, we, we, we were the first. And so we had to, we, it was, we, at that point it was slower. I mean, we had, it was just starting. So we got a crew member. We didn't just immediately shut down. Everybody was like, well, we're gonna, who's got it? Fortunately, only nobody else got it. It was weird. This was a production, uh, a, a person who was riding around in close proximity with other people in the vans and uh, going on location scouts. And miraculously, she was the only one who got it. And she's fine. She just, you know, she went pulled through, but, uh, but, um, but nobody else got it. But even then, like literally four days after that, everything shut down. And the studios, pro protocols were starting to be, nobody at that point didn't know what really to do. Yeah. Nobody was like, do we shut down? Do we? Because she thought she just had a, a, a cold. Um, and then things started to shut down. And we were, we had just, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, we were at the end of the shooting when that happened. We were in the middle of, of, of post production, but we had, that was the last. So fortunately, we, fortunately for us, had finished shooting. We, we finished the last episode literally five, five or six days before everything shut down. And Good. so then, and then, yeah, we got lucky on that. And so then, but then post-production, everything we did from our homes, uh, all the editing, all the mixing, the sound work, you know, actors, you know, in every series and every episode usually have to replace lines that are garbled or that the sound wasn't good. And you go into a, you know, normally you go into a big studio with mics and people behind booths and this, this, that was reduced to actors taking their phones, going into their, into their closets and recording their own lines. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Literally, literally had John Slattery in his closet recording, you know, his, his, <laughs> his, his, his <laughs> like, what's that echo, John? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's that barking in the background? That's my dog. I'm in my house. <laughs> um, we uh, yeah. There's a couple points in this series. If you really listen, you can hear a couple of wonky lines. <laughs> but but for the most part, it came out really well. I was amazed at how 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 well the post. And then the editors edited from home, and we and then I mean it was all it, it, we all just split apart and did it. But it took longer, but we got it we got it done. But. Uh, um, but yeah, no. So so it was it was just shorten it, it. You know, other series unfortunately you know were really hit harder. And they if if they were in production while they were, I mean, shooting while the, when the, everything shut down, then you know they just simply mm. got cut off. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so, what's the biggest message you want the audience to take away from this new series? And then we've heard about your own personal smart devices, but have you changed the way that you're using those now? Cause I have seriously been considering <laughs> unplugging and just ditching the phone and unplugging smart devices. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think about it. I mean, I, I go through these periods where I unplug myself, where I, uh, because, I, because so much, I, mean, I just, I get, I'm a, I'm an addictive personality as you can see by the, uh. the crap that I've accumulated over the years. <laughs> <laughs> so and so i mean i, I uh, it's almost impossible it's very hard for me sometimes especially when you're in the early stages of writing to not go on the internet to not you know fiddle around to not get lost in some reverie and so very very often i i just will turn off my computers and everything and go to back to handwriting which i actually a lot of writers do and it works well but it gets radical at that point i mean because i you know and and for my for my kids uh, you know turning off smart devices, it's not an option right now. It's like, if anything, it's more yeah. smarter because that's how they're learning in school. If, if we turn yeah. off the smart devices, I, I don't know, there's no school. So we, we are, you know, it, it's actually with COVID, it's gone the opposite direction. Everything is, we're more wired in. Uh, and, uh, you know, in that respect, it's been, it's been great. For, you know, the technology has really helped out. My kids are, are, go, are continuing, the schools have been able to continue. My kids have been able to talk to their friends and their, and their you know, so, uh, my son is able to talk to his buddies at night when they, they play computer games. And so there, there's a little communication with their friends, which they don't really have right now. So at least there's a blessing in that. Um, you know, but the downside is, that, you know, hopefully when we get through this and life goes more or less back to normal, you know, then the question becomes, you know, we're going to be even more addicted to this stuff now. I mean, think about it. We've all, we've all been, we, we, uh, here we are right now on Zoom. We're all going to mm -hmm. be we're all going to be used to this. I mean, even myself, when I was doing post-production on this, on the show, I was like, you know, this kind of works really well. I never have to go into the office. <laughs> why do I have to drive all, why do I have to do the hour drive into Paramount in, every morning to sit in an office and when I can just do it at home, I can wander, saunter up to my office and, you know, bring that, you know, it, 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 so I think it, th th there's going to be some serious, I think all this co has, has just plunged people more into more of a technological dependence. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I think this is going to change behavior even more. And so is that good or bad, bad and good. Everything is bad and good. You know, you can look, you can go back through the ages and find people, usually older people railing about, you know, the new things, you know, these kids today and their, you know, television <laughs> or these kids today and their Walkmans. Yeah. And they're, 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 you know, <laughs> they're sure it was these kids today and their 78 RPMs. When I, when, I, when I was a kid, I had to listen to live music, you know. So, so you know, it, it's part of that. You, you wonder how much of that is, you know, that, you know, every, we hate everything that's new and, and bitch about it. But at the same time, I do think this is a change in behavior that, that we're, we're, you know, there's no way to stop it, is my point. There ain't gonna, it ain't gonna stop unless there, unless, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a nuclear war. <laughs> yeah. All electricity goes out like in the bad movies. Other than that, this is it. This is, this is how it's going to be. So we might as well get used to it and find a way to, to function with it. Yeah. Well, as, as long as the AI doesn't take over my Roomba, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ready to go back to vacuum anymore. I, I like that little thing. <laughs> you know, the, AI thing, the AI thing is really interesting. I mean, Sam Harris was a, th you know, who, who's a, a, a really smart individual, gave a great talk on YouTube about it. And he made it, he made a really great point that it, it's almost like his point was not that when something like an AI super intelligence will arise, not if it will, but when, meaning mm -hmm. if you look past through history, there is no reason to believe that this will not happen. And if you look at the logical extension of, because here the problem is, if you create an, an artificial intelligence that's as smart as a human, the very next step will be to, the creation of something that's much smarter than humans, yeah. because an AI can rewrite itself and improve itself. So it's inevitable. And so then you have a question of what, we've never faced anything like that, <laughs> ever. We've never in the history of, 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 of human, of the human race faced something that's thousands of times smarter and more creative and more clever than we are and then what what does that look like that's the real fun and chilling question uh that the series asks but also just in general it's a really interesting that people have really begun to ask and uh and you know some people like i said there's a number of people who say when not not if but when i mean and and the when is very frightening yeah well hopefully the show's gonna give us some answers on how to stop this thing <laughs> 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 a lot of the books, unfortunately, the research said basically it, 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 there's no way we're ever going to defeat something like this. So there's not even a point to try. So <laughs> I think one, one, oh. one, one book, one book even said, you know, in Hollywood, it would be a plucky band of computer people who would defeat the AI. And I'm like, well, that's what we're doing. They're plucky. But I mean, hopefully they're smarter than, than, than the book said. But basically, a lot of people was like, you don't even try. We're, we're never going to be able to outthink it. I mean, Imagine something that can think, you know, like who, who, who can look look past ten thousand years of human history in, in 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 about in a fraction of a second. That's how fast it can learn. Um, that's a, a frightening concept. Yes. So uh, tonight is a huge night for you, and um, and your, your series, like we said, uh, is debuting on Fox um, tonight. So uh, how do you plan to celebrate? Uh, you, are you going to watch with some family and friends? Are you going to be doing homework on the side, or uh, no, are you trying to? <laughs> I have to go over to my brother's house. My brother is a, is a writer as well. He works on 911 for Fox. Uh, and we are, I'm going to go to his house and we're going to uh, have a little pool party and, and watch it outside from the pool with my kids. Oh, normally, normally I wouldn't. I don't particularly like watching any of my stuff. I just cringe. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> but, but you know what? I don't watch my chief chats over either. So I, <laughs> it's hard. I, we do, we, it's we hard. do a chief chat and I let it go. It's hard. You don't. You don't want to watch. It. I don't know. I am. I've never watched anything I've done ever. I just. Cre I watch. It's, but in this case, it's now that I have the kids are too excited, so I got. I got to oh. put up with it. Yeah. They, they got. They got. They want to go see it. So. Um, that's. Oh, no. Doing. Well, I'm excited. I'm. I'm definitely watching it tonight. So. Oh, good. Good. I hope Same here. Same here. So Manny, we have a military audience watching with mm -hmm. us right now. And the great thing about TV is it is a lifeline for our nation's military. So they can watch a show, even if they're separated from loved ones, and they can still talk, you know, with their friends and family about what they just saw. That's such a common tie. So as a showrunner, you are helping foster these connections for our soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, and our Coasties. They would love to hear some words of encouragement or inspiration from you. So what do you have? What can you share with us for them? Well, words of inspiration. All I can say is that, they're, they're, you know, from, from my family and the people I work with, uh, you know, we, we, we are all uh, 
grateful for your service and, and the work you do for our country. And my, my, my children every morning stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, I remind them of uh, very often of the sacrifice men and women are, are making for on behalf of us and giving us the lives that we lead. And so we, you know, we are, we are, I don't know if this is the words of encouragement that you're, that you're looking for, but, yeah. you that, but it's my whole family, you know, I'm an immigrant family. I came from, from Cuba, my, my, my mm -hmm. parents and, and brought me over when I was very young. And uh, they came here for, because of, because of the freedoms provided by people like yourselves. So uh, God bless you. And, and uh, we remember, we remember you, we keep you in our hearts every morning. My children do, my family does. And, and thank you for the work you do. Thank you for that. That Thank was great. You. That was that was exactly the kind of words of inspiration we were looking for. Good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. So Manny, just one second. Want to take a moment to look at the Facebook live feed. Um, Chris mm -hmm. Ward says 24 equals one of the greatest TV dramas <laughs> ever. Thank you for the tense enjoyment. <laughs> Thank you. I love that show as well. I was a fan before I started working on it. It was, it's, it's a funny show. Oh, yeah, my... And before we say goodbye, can you remind us one more time, where can we watch next? Well, it shows up, it's gonna be on Fox, whatever Fox station are, is wherever you are. Uh, and it'll be on at 9 p.m. tonight. Um, and, uh, that's it. I mean, nine, 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 Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. on Fox. Awesome. And then everybody watching, don't forget to follow at next on Fox on Twitter and Instagram. Keep up with the show. Well, Manny, thank you so much time, so much for spending time with us today. Um, America's airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Posties, and Space Force. Uh, we got we got a new one. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, we wish you all the best on the new series and thank you so much for uh, spending a little time with us. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's been an honor. Awesome. Awesome. So if you don't mind uh, staying back a little bit, um, I, I, I normally get, give my guests a token of my appreciation. So I just got to get some information from you. Don't hang up. We'll be, we're, yeah. we're going to stop want, the light, but don't, don't hang up the phone. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Bye uh, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.